Hello, hi everyone. I'm not so tall, okay. Hello everyone, my name is Abdullah. I'm today to present uh, our work on benchmark for topological and special assessment of indoor residential building. And my supervisor is Timo Hartman, maybe some of you know him. So let's start with the title, what does it mean a benchmark? A benchmark is a really wide word that can be used for anything to me, or what we understand that benchmark is a point that you start from. So here we need to have a new data set for residential building, which target topological and spatial assessment. And topological and spatial assessment can be categorized like this application, like we have area measurement, floor plan, adjacency graph, navigation, and so on. And if we need to have a reconstructed model from point cloud about this application, we have to do some reference model and also we have to have an evaluation matrix. And finally, the scope of our work is really important because we, this is highlight how we work. So our scope is indoor residential building. And here I'm going to talk about motivation and data set, how we collect this data set, how we build a reference model, how we do evaluation matrix, and finally the conclusion. So first of all, why we target residential building. As we can see, residential building is over 70% of our total buildings. And according to the Building Performance Institute in Europe, 97% uh, of our building in Europe need to be renovated, which means it's really important to use techniques like laser scanning to highlight the point that we're working on. And the final thing also, residential building is really based on everyone who's living in this house occupancy and usage better from different cultures. So why use a spatial and topological application? Why, this, why we choose this application? First of all, accurate spatial analysis is really important for space management, which by way enhance our living comfort because we are living in these spaces. Second, topological assessment is crucial for effective navigation, especially if we have in case in any risk how we can go outside from this place. It's really important to us. And the last reason is what I'm doing in my research or my thesis is about application for spatial topological can achieve the balance between accuracy and practicality. From three days here in conference, everyone talked about how the data should be clean, how the data should be high quality, and this is really true and this is really important, but can we think about another approach where we have a balance between decision making and practicality and the data quality? So we're trying to achieve a balance, how we can get information from low data quality. And this is, can be achieved by this topological application. So when we start working in this, we have a lot of data sets publicly available. So why we need a new data set? We categorize this data set into three things. First of all, most of this data set is for indoor residential building, which is perfect, but not fit for residential indoor building. In the last slide, I will show you a really huge example of what I'm talking about. The second one, most of these data are synthetic data, which is also really good, but not work for residential building. And finally, most of residential building that's been used in research has a missing data, like furniture. Some researchers remove furniture because they're targeting semantic segmentation or object detection or so on. So for now, we have an idea that, okay, we need a new data set for residential building, but how we are going to do this. So we connect with some uh, German companies. They were super excited about it, but all companies refused to support us with any point cloud. So we go to, okay, we need point cloud. So we have a deal with me and my colleagues. So I offer them to scan the house and they give me lunch and then I will give them the BIM model of their house, which always is a win-win situation. Everyone is happy with having a BIM model. So we start working. And we have that acquisition. We use two devices. We use laser scanning, Trimble X9, and also we use iPhone later. And the reason why we choose this one because also we need the comparison between the data quality as we speak. Like we need high quality data and also we need low quality data. And to achieve like a new contribution in data selection, we have some data evaluation. So we have categorized the point uh, the selection of this data based on point criteria and scanning condition and scan content. So for example, the accuracy and color, a number of point and device used, and for scanning condition, acquisition complexity like lighting condition or access to this area, 
and moving object, and finally scan contains what is this building type, and is it contained furniture or not. And we believe that by achieving this, we have a really good example of residential building which represents what we need. And here's an example of the data set. We have five data sets. Uh, the first one and the second one for the same house, but this is the first floor and this is the second floor. And we have house under construction, and we have a student dormitory, and we have an apartment in the 11th floor. This is my house. So if you can see here the data set, we have like, we try to take data from every place that we can have, and we have representing different things from urban, residential, unf uh, unfinished settings, and high rise environments. So we have somehow like a point from every point. And if we want to reconstruct model from this using point cloud, we have to go back to the reference model or what we call a ground truth. So we built reference model for all the data set. We use LOD 200, like we build walls and ceiling, flooring, doors, and window and stairs. Again, we highlight we don't need so much accuracy in this. And this model inherently facilitates the generation of other application, like from this model we can build adjacency graph, we can build navigation plan and evacuation buses. So a good question is going to be how you build this model. So we use the traditional scan to prim technique that we first, we have a point cloud, you put the point cloud in the rivet model, and then we first think we adjust levels to the thing on a rivet, and then we start uh, construct building components like wall and ceiling and floor, and this next step is doors and window, and finally we put the stairs if the data set contains stairs. Uh, one thing also we highlight, when you do scan to PIM, some people use uh, on-site measurement to make sure that the model he did is accurate as it is in, in the real world. But here we didn't do this. We, also, we, we only, <laughs> sorry, we only slowly focus on the accuracy of the point cloud or the device that we have. And one thing also we highlight in the paper that there is a difference between ground truth and reference model. Ground truth is a word that's been used in point cloud processing for highlighting that it, it's ground truth, but for as is an as built condition, which is based on human, there's nothing called ground truth. It's called, it better to call like a reference model more than ground truth which has been used as a comparative standard rather than an absolute ground truth. So, okay, now we can, we can, can reconstruct a model, but how we can say this is a good model or not? So we have to do some evaluation metric. So we proposed some for the application, like for error measurement, we proposed that using root mean square for error, which highlight the difference between the predicted area and the accurate area. And for floor plan, we can use the accuracy metrics like precision and recall and F1 score. And for adjacency graph and all these graphs, usually conducting a visualization uh, evaluation by expert, which highlight the clarity, accuracy, and usability of this graph. And one thing also we highlight that you can use graph edit distance, which is a quantitative method to assessment how is your model is good or not. So, we have a data set, the data set is already public on, available on deposit once on TU Berlin. You can download the data set, you can work on it. Uh, and it's public invitation for everyone here who work on point cloud processing, residential environment, denoising, topology, indoor modeling. And it's maybe weird why we put denoising. And the reason for this, we didn't do any pre-processing for the data. So we will have a raw data, raw point cloud, without doing anything. Also, because we believe that noise in indoor environment could be considered as a, a valuable information. So we cannot delete a cup or we cannot remove a, a frame on the wall. It may be represent the area or space classification can be used for space classification. So to conclude what we did, we represent a new indoor residential data set which targets spatial and topology application and the same time can be used for indoor modeling. We support it with reference model and proposed evaluation metrics for the application that we target. And we target the development of more accurate and efficient algorithm from the computer science field, and I will explain this later. And 
this can be used for a lot of applications. For example, we can use enhancing emergency response, architecture design, renovation, replanning, uh, improved our, our comfort in this area. And finally, scantograph, which I just did this point yesterday, uh, a colleague who presents, uh, I think it's for a review paper about how we can do scantograph. So this is also can be done if you can have a scan from point cloud to go into a graph like adjacent graph. This is also something that we can work on. And the limitation here, of course we have five data sets which is, doesn't represent anything at all. But at least as I told before, this is a benchmark. So this is a starting point to focus more on residential indoor environment. So we aim to have this by more data sets. And also one thing we discover while we do is scanning that every house is based on the culture. So your living room is different from my living room. Rooms in, in Germany is, is different from rooms in Netherlands, from rooms in Italy, in any way. So we also want to integrate this culture thinking about residential building. And finally, I will talk about this development. This is the last slide, which is the fun part. So this is an example of one wall <laughs> in a residential building. So the people who work on semantic segmentation, object detection, uh, can you highlight this as a, or can you classify this as a wall while you don't have anything that represents a wall? No features, nothing at all. So you have a library and you have a TV and a table and you have a piano and behind this you have a cabinet of the kitchen and here is the stairs. So if we think that we have enough data, we, we don't have enough data. We need more data. Even with this data, we need more data. We calculate the area of this. It's, we don't have anything from the wall. It's last 3% of this wall is presented as a wall. So in a computer vision is a way that we, how the computer can see as we see. So if you cannot see this as a wall, the computer will never see this as a wall. So this is one proof of what we did. It's, it's important, it's needed. The focus on residential building should be highlighted more. And finally, thank you, and hope you for a good show. Thanks.